These horns are homemade and I used the system that a uh, guy on the internet had from overseas and I can't remember his name right offhand. But I made his jigs and I went to McMaster Car and I bought the Silver Braze and the Flux and the uh, drill rod blank for the wire and the sheet steel. And I took these and cut these out filed them down, ground them down by hand, drilled the holes, put them in the jig, and he has a little thing where you make a little donut out of this silver solder, and you slide it over that wire, and you're holding this wire up straight, and slide that little donut down there, and you put a bunch of flux on it, and you hit it with a propane torch, and just wait, 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 and all of a sudden they'll just liquefy and go poof, and it gives you the prettiest little fillet. Nice solid fillet. It's as good as anything I've ever bought in at a store. In fact, I bought some that were a lot worse than this and paid 12 or $14 for one control horn. And these things come out great. You can make these horns whatever shape. You can make them straight. I made these like a trailing edge savers uh, for the wing and the stab and elevator uh, when i set up to make these things i'll show you the jig here <clears throat> these are the jigs and this jig right here clamps vertically like this into a, a vise. And then your wire runs here. And your control horn sets on these two screws. And you take a little pinch clamp and pitch it on there. And wire it to these two little arms here. And then that holds everything for you. Before you've done that, you slid your little O-ring of solder down on there. Or silver. And flux it all up. And then that's holding it. And you sit here and just take your... Uh, argon gas I think is what I'm using a yellow tank works real good and just start heating that thing around like that and it'll wick right down here and then this little jig I made for two or three different sizes of bell cranks you'll have different widths from fuselage widths or at the stab and fuselage width, width at the uh, the main wing and it's just a piece of aluminum. This piece holds your upright, which it bolts in place onto this piece, and that's bolted down tight. And then these dowels set your width, your fuselage width, which you can make them whatever you want to. This as plans changed, I've changed this. I'll probably end up getting another piece of aluminum sometime down the line. And we made a little V block that when you make that first bend, you have to have some way of keeping that wire from pulling when you make your first bend. So you have to clamp it to the table. So I actually made two of these little clamps. So it's sort of a belt and suspenders thing to keep it from moving with bolted to the, these pieces and then these V-blocks bolted to the far side and then we'll bend one side. Then you really don't need these much anymore. Although, I'll still put them on the side that's already be bent just so it doesn't straighten it out any. Right? What are you bending with that? I don't understand. I'm using this, which is a K&S bender, I think is what it is. Same thing I use. Get it, you to clamp this in a vise and you slide this down over there and you bend your wire, right? Right. Well, this I'm using these quarter inch oh, I see. music wire as the same thing. What are you bending in that though? I'm, I'm bending this wire. Oh. These bends right here. This one right here. Use these two dowels. I see. <clears throat> and when this is bolted vertically, perfectly vertically where you want it, when you bend it back across this flat surface, you can't get these like this. If you get them like this, if you get them bent like this by freehanding them, then when you straighten them to one another, it'll move this out of vertical. 
where you want it and you can't fix that there's you can you can try vice grips holding this and try to get it back up in there it won't go you're you're stuck with this being off vertical well this locks everything vertical where you want it and then your bends are exact when you make these bends they're they're parallel with this flat piece because they can't come up they can't go down when this piece is on top of them there's no, they're trapped right there's nowhere they can go obviously it won't come around now because I got some other blocking and such in here but uh, it's just a matter of bending and, and it's just an overkill wire bender basically it's it probably took me a couple hours to make it initially but now I've got it and if you're building very similar planes you've got it if you're if you're buying unbent control horns you've got a nice way to bend them right bend them accurately not putting them in a vise pounding them over with a hammer uh, a quarter inch dowel rod for eighth inch music wire is about the perfect radius on a bend radius that you want in a wire you don't want it much tighter than that if you do then you start getting a, a stress in the wire this is drill rod Plank, like I said before that I got from McMaster car uh, it's all part of the system uh, I can't remember the guy's name I wish I could remember his name that he made these jigs and I just copied what he did Dan Winship nah, it wasn't Dan Winship it's a guy from overseas somewhere mm -hmm. uh, I for the life of me I can't remember his name right now but uh, I like to thank him for his idea because it, it worked out really well for a couple hours of labor. You get nice, nice accurate bends in your stuff. You don't have to worry about being off. Uh, I've been them by hand before, and then this control horn would be off. I made first bend and it slipped. I wasn't quite looking right, and it wasn't where I wanted it. Some of these planes you want to rake forward a little bit or rake back a little bit to help the geometry of your control system uh, you can set that in on this you set that up after you solder this to the straight wire you set it up on here and you use a new piece of metal here set it up you line it where you want and then drill bolt this piece of aluminum that does might be a little easier to see okay I think I've uh, killed it on the focus but I reset the camera and here we go now so go ahead okay where we were at was getting this in the right position to where you want so what we'll start off with here is I made three or four of these these are how they come out of the the soldering jig this holds it like this. Hold on. Okay. This wire is held like this. It sets on top of the two screws. Clamp it here with a some kind of little clamp or whatever you can, to these two screws, and that holds everything in place for you. Then you adjust your wire where you're centered in there. Uh, take a little piece of copper wire up here top and bottom that holds everything together this is in a vice clamp of some type uh, your little solder ring goes down on there and then you heat it up solder it and then you end up with basically a real nice little horn it's got a very clean strong solder joint uh, then these things go into here they'll go into your jig they slide in here and then you adjust your angle you put a fresh piece of aluminum L angle in here and you adjust this whether you want it vertical or whether you want it tilted forward a little bit or tilted back a little bit or whatever kind of control geometry you want to get your push rod at 90 degrees to the horn if you got a real high stab and elevator you might have to have a different angle uh, but anyway, I just I got these drilled for where I wanted them at for this particular plane, and it bolts to this aluminum piece. Then you'll take these little clamps 
on the opposite side that you bend first, the opposite side, put these clamps. This holds the wire to keep the wire from wanting to pull. If we're bending on this horn, it'll want to pull this way as you wrap that wire around there. So once you get this all bolted down, you'll take your Harry Higley or whoever made this bending arm yourself. I guess you could make one yourself out of a little bar of steel. And put it down over your dowel rod that you put in there, spaced out for your fuselage, bend the first corner. Then you remember to put your bearings on here before you do this, which is a mistake we've all made probably bending these things, forget to put the bushings on them. Then when you get ready to do the other side, you move one of the clamps to this side. This is only a precautionary thing to keep from maybe bending this one. You just bent out a little bit more and pulling it back the other way, and it will pull a little bit. Clamp this back down on this side, and then make your second bend. By having you bending on this plate, it assures that these two pieces are parallel to one another when you bend them. And so you won't get one of these things where you got one up and one down by freehanding them. <clears throat> and, and sometimes you can even get them so far off that your geometry is wrong. This will be tilted forward, this will be tilted back, and if you can sit here and you can adjust these to where they're even, but this will still be off. So if you want to make sure that there's no way that once that's first bend is made and this is off, there's no way of correcting it outside of unsoldering it and soldering it again. So this keeps from having to do that. Make sure you have a nice, clean, perfect solder joint and your bends are where you want them to be. Then if they're off just a teeny bit, you can tweak them ever so slightly, but bending on this flat piece of aluminum, they're not going to be off. They're going to be parallel to it. You're going to be perfect on these things. I set these things up, I made three or four of them at, at one time because it just saved time. You know, you cut out... Those flap horns there? Uh, let's see, I got a flap and elevator. I've got three flap horns and two elevators here, and the, uh, the third elevator is roaming around here already dead. Did you make any 332nds? I haven't made any 332nds yet. I have the materials but I haven't made any yet. All, all, the only difference in this and a 330, these are eighth inch uh, drill rod blank, and I got 330 seconds drill rod blank. The only difference is when I make these horns, I drill a different size hole, because there's a set clearance that you want. It's not super tight, but it's loose enough that it allows us the silver solder to Why don't penetrate. you sell me a set of horns before I go home? <laughs> sell you a set? Yeah. These are set up for one inch, or uh, three quarter inch, I think, for everything. And my glasses here. Well, I'm going to shut the camera if off that here. that works for you. Yeah, it'll be fine.